Hey everyone, it's Jane back with another freaking video. Guys, so this is the plan. Today is Tuesday, June 25th, 5.50 in the afternoon. I am at my mom's house in Jacksonville. If you can't tell, I did a video here before with my sister. Kayla's currently at work. My mom's at work. Her boyfriend's at work. So it's just me here. My day kind of started off with me waking up at like 12 o'clock. At like 12.31, we went to the pool. At like 2 o'clock, my sister went home to get ready. And so I kind of just have been relaxing since I got here. I got to Jacksonville a couple days ago. We were on vacation. If you do not follow me on my vlog channel, be sure to do that to kind of like keep up with my everyday life I guess I'm gonna try and vlog on that a lot more and do like main channel videos exclusively on this so more so just you know sit down talking videos question and answers hauls all of that I really wanted to do this Q&A because everyone has been asking so many questions I've seen so much positive feedback on my whole breakup video yes I am currently going through a breakup slash heartbreak it's been like four weeks since me and my ex broke up and it just sounds so weird saying that like hearing that you know you never think that someone could do something like that to you but then they do it and it's just like damn all right well thank you next and we're going to just move on I have continued on with my life I am officially going to be moving out of Valdosta August 1st back into my mom's house again but I'm gonna be using it as a transition period I just feel like I've been kind of having like a lot of anxiety there and it's just really not a welcoming place especially because I moved there for him and us so I just want to get out of there but before I start I want to give a huge shout out to Aviano Comforts because they sent me this amazing blanket as you can see it came as you can see it came in this bag right here it's so heavy this blanket is like a weighted blanket you purchase your blanket based off weight so if it's for just you you'll get it for like one person or if it's for a couple it's supposed to just kind of get rid of anxiety and hug your body just right and so that's why it is really really heavy it is a microfiber comfort combo this is the weighted piece that goes on the inside and then the outside cover is this super freaking soft I could just use this as the blanket but once I put it all together I'll have my sister help me this blanket is literally amazing a friend of mine had it and I saw it and then Aviana reached out and I was just like absolutely so the good thing about this blanket is that it does come in two pieces so this is the outside cover and the other piece doesn't get dirty so you can just take this off and wash it itself the other side is just normal and this side has like bumps they offer like seven pound ten pound 15 20 25 30 I do have a lot of trouble falling asleep some nights so I am so excited to see how it helps me so it just kind of feels like a big hug and that's really what like I liked the most about it because I went from sleeping with someone every single night for like four months to sleeping by myself so it just kind of has been like a weird transition but this blanket has definitely helped me so thank you Aviano so much if you guys want to check them out the description will be down below I don't promote things unless I really do like them I have in the past but I kind of realized like I was giving you guys false advertisement so this definitely is a must if you're looking for something to help with anxiety or you know something Something along the lines of that but like I said thank you Aviano I'm going to be using this the rest of my video I know the weighted blanket part is not inside of it right now because I took it out but I'm just gonna use this for right now only a limited amount of the blankets will be available for 25% off so I highly suggest you get it now that way they're not all gone because my code which is gonna be down below will help you get that 25% off so be sure to do that so we can get into this Q&A I feel like I need some water like I'm out of breath y'all get some popcorn get a snack or something because this is going to be a long video I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me some questions and I got these. Literally, there are probably a good hundred more, but I can only answer so many. I'm gonna start off with a part one video. There will be a part two to this, but for right now, I don't wanna have an hour long video just talking and talking, because I know some people don't like that. So I'm gonna answer as many as I can within the time span of this video. I am going to be going to a dance class tonight at One Vibe. Hopefully I can vlog it. I really am hoping that I have a fun time. I used to dance when I was younger, so we'll see. The first question, have you ever been cheated on and how to deal with it? So yes. I was cheated on not with my last boyfriend but the boyfriend before that you all know who he is I'm not gonna say names because I'm not trying to give clout to anybody else because I have done enough of that I'm not gonna give too much information just because like it's back in my past but yes I was cheated on we were together for about three years towards the end of that relationship there was a lot of cheating going on on his end so the way I dealt with it at first was really really bad I kind of just kept being in denial about it and I think that's the worst thing you can do so my biggest tip is to just realize 
that that person is able to do that to you so if they did it to you once they can do it to you again my way of dealing with it was like talking to other people like trying to gain my self-confidence back I left Tallahassee because that's where all of that shenanigans happened and once I left I was able to come back because I needed to just get my mind together I really just needed to get my bearings and realize like I am better than that and I didn't deserve that so number two do you believe in moving too fast if you would have asked me this four months ago I would have said no asking me this now definitely I think that it's so easy to get wrapped up in the idea of a relationship and like falling in love that you just want to just you want to keep things moving quickly you want to move in together you want to have kids you want to get a dog you want to this you want to that kids thing is kind of extreme but like you want to move in together you want to get a dog you want to have that commitment you want to feel like that person is yours forever so you try to do things to make you feel like you know they can't go anywhere which is completely wrong because no matter what you do for that person they will leave you they can leave you you can leave them no one is entitled to be with someone and no one is entitled to have to stay so moving too fast definitely can happen especially when you lose yourself in a relationship and that does happen a lot as well yes it can so you really should be aware and remember that like you're supposed to be living your own life as well and that other person that comes into your life should not dictate what you do where you go who you're with your friends you should be able to live your own life be your own person and that kind of should prevent you from moving too quickly how am I handling the breakup well I kind of talked about it at the beginning I'm okay I get sad sometimes I still miss him sometimes I miss him every day as of right now I still think about him but that's just normal because I did care about him and love him so much and I guess I do still have love for him in my heart because he was my best friend so even though I know I don't want to be with him like boyfriend wise I kind of just wish that I was able to be friends with him but I just know it's not fair to me to let him get that part of me still when he couldn't even handle the relationship part of me it's a lot my my first step to all of this really is leaving Valdosta I deleted the channel so the channel is gone I don't have to see any of that the videos are gone I'm kind of just going one day at a time it does get really hard I do get sad I do get angry you know sometimes I just want to call him and I know I can't it's a process it's a journey like I said one day at a time I'm getting through it and I know a couple months from now I will be perfectly fine but as of right now I'm still a little Eh. How to get over an ex you really loved? Well, I would say that my last boyfriend, not my ex, but my ex ex, I thought I really loved him. So getting over him was a lot different than getting over my last ex because I felt like the love I had for Brandon was a lot more deep and genuine. So I'm still figuring it out. I can't even give you guys any advice on that because I'm still trying to get over it myself. And you know, once it happens, I can think back like, what did I do? So I'm currently still trying to do it myself. So I can't answer that. I'm sorry, but we'll work on it together, I promise. Are you still friends with Rachel and Madison? Absolutely, to both of them. Rachel is my old roommate slash Billy, which is like a big in a sorority, but for the modeling troupe that I'm in, she was my roommate, best friend, basically like my mom's sister, everything in one. We still communicate. She's a really busy person. She's grown and on her grown woman-ish. So when we do get to talk, it's nice. We went on a girl's trip like a little while ago. So hopefully this summer, she's gonna be coming to LA with me for a little bit. But as far as Madison goes, it has been a little bit difficult trying to balance being friends with Madison and Brandon being friends with Madison as well so Madison was Brandon's friend first so I can't just be like well you have to be friends with me you can't be friends with him so it's kind of like a constant reminder of Brandon every time I'm with her just because something will always come up or like her boyfriend is best friends with Brandon so it is kind of difficult but I still love her and I'm not gonna stop being friends with her just because she's friends with Brandon like eventually I'll move on and it won't even bother me anymore it's not like she's rubbing it in my face or anything like that I think we're all handling it pretty well and they kind of are respectful like my friends that I've made through him are respectful of that should you ever take an ex back I never have but that's because my relationships never really ended very well if you guys break up for reasons that are mutual and it's respectful and later on down the line you guys come back together and the person is like 100% committed to you I say yes it's not a terrible idea but you also have to remember there was a reason you guys broke up so if that reason really isn't valid anymore then go for it personally I haven't done that so why are guys okay with cheating and why are guys afraid of commitment my answer is FOMO the fear of missing out everyone has FOMO once in their life I feel like in guys it kind of happens a little bit more in my experience I could be totally wrong but guys are always afraid that you know there's another girl out there that's better than the girl they're with or they want to live that college life they want to experience parties and mess around and do whatever they're gonna do so I think that's why guys are afraid of commitment because they're afraid to be tied down to one person and the way a woman's mind and heart works is 
completely different than a guy. Yes, they do have feelings and they care just like we do, but they care on like a different level. I think that's why they're afraid of commitment. And as far as the whole cheating thing goes, I don't really know. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone, I feel like, has cheated once in their life. And if not, good. People aren't really okay with cheating after the fact. Once it's happening in the moment, normally people just won't care or they will care. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. I can't really explain it from my side because I've never really cheated. So people don't feel the way you feel. And so it's kind of hard to put yourself in that position of why are they okay with doing the things that they do. I ask myself that all the time. Why did he do what he did and why does he not feel bad? It's just an answer I'm never going to get and I have come to the realization of that. J and B channel, we deleted that. Dead, done, goodbye. How to just stop loving someone. Some of these questions tie in together but you don't just force yourself to stop loving someone. You fall out of love with them. Just how you fell in love with them. You have to slowly fall out of love with them. You'll stop thinking about them every now and then. When you hear a song, you won't think of them or eventually you'll you'll hear the song you'll think of them and it won't hurt you know it's just like a process of forgetting falling in love with something else i'm trying to fall in love with myself currently so that's like what i'm working on i don't know you can't just stop loving someone like you just can't like my very first boyfriend my very first real boyfriend we were together for like two years in high school and then we broke up i think it was high school yeah we broke up and he moved and i still feel like i have love for him because he was like my first and i really we kind of talk every now and then love is difficult love is confusing but but love shouldn't be hard. So I feel like if you have to stop loving someone, there's a reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I don't think you can just stop loving someone. How to let go of toxic people. This makes me so angry because people can be so terrible to you and like people can get abusive. People can get physically abusive, mentally abusive and not even realize they're doing it. And it takes a strong person to realize that there's people in their life that are toxic and to remove them is to just cut them off. I personally feel like if you want to get rid of someone toxic, you have to cut them out of your life 100 110%. No ifs, ands, or buts. No friendship connections. No nothing. Because you're constantly going to be reminded of it. They're constantly going to try and get back in your life. You have to just put your foot down and be like, I want nothing to do with you. You are not good for me. And so that's when you take the steps necessary and you just move on with your life. Living in Valdosta, do you feel safe? It depends on what you mean by safe. I don't feel like I'm going to be physically harmed by anyone. I mean, at the apartment complex I live in currently, Madison's car got stolen right literally when we were like inside and we had no idea. I mean, there's going to be crime anywhere you go. As far as the whole like Brandon thing goes, like I do live above him and that does really suck because he has friends and knew this and knew that and wants nothing to do with me. So I'm kind of just up there sad and I'm, that's one of the main reasons why I'm leaving because I do not want to be a part of him moving on in his own way because I am moving on in my own way and it's not as quickly as him. I just have to leave because it's just not right for me. It's not good for my heart or my mind. So getting out of there is my best bet. How to cope with depression and being sad. I've only really been depressed once in my life. I wouldn't really consider me being depressed now because I still get up. I still go do my normal things. I'm just a little sad when I do it. So handling depression, people handle depression in their own ways. So you can either go to a doctor, you can get medicine, you can surround yourself with positive people and do things that you love. And that's personally what I like to do. I don't really want to take medicine for depression or anything because I feel like it, it changes your, your way of thinking. I makes you not you it makes you not the person that you are but I've never taken it so I really don't know that's just me kind of assuming that's why I've always just kind of tried to get myself out of that rut of I hate my life things are so terrible you know you have to be the one to pull yourself out of it because no one else is going to do that people are going to try but at the end of the day people have their own things to worry about and own things to handle and situate you have to be strong you have to be like okay this is not how I want to live my life no one wants to live the rest of their life sad you have to encourage yourself to be great to do better to do good things it's as far as being sad goes, honestly, I still am sad sometimes. My biggest tip on being sad is to do things that don't make you sad. Do things that distract you because the more you distract yourself, the more you forget about it. Going to this dance class tonight, and I was a little sad earlier, but once I realized I was going to the dance class, my mood changed immediately. I did my hair, I did my makeup, I'm filming this video. Like, it's crazy what doing things that make you happy do for yourself internally because, you know, just one day at a time. You got to do things that make you happy happy. That's what I feel like I stopped doing in my last relationship. I was still doing things for myself, but not everything made me happy. What are some things that have helped you move on? This dance class that I haven't even done yet, but I already feel great. Listening to good music, listening to Lizzo. She's my girl. Listening to Megan Thee Stallion. That's my girl. Friends, being with my family. I went on vacation. Doing things, like I said, that make you happy and that make you just forget about it. Because forgetting about it slowly will heal you. How to open up after heartbreak. Well, after my last boyfriend, 
boyfriend not my current ex but the one before that I think we stopped like officially even talking to each other in August maybe July of 2018 and I didn't start dating or talking to anyone really until I met Brandon like I had talked to people here and there but even then I just none of them really made me want to be in a relationship I just still felt like I wasn't good it depends on the person that you meet it depends on the people that you meet once I met him I felt like I opened up a lot more not even gonna get into that because all of that was bullshit you have to just be open to the idea of moving on and that's kind of what I'm stuck with right now like I don't want to move on and I know I have to so trying to talk to other people don't use other people and make them think that you like them like make them aware that you are going through things and that you just want to talk to them to make them happy to be your friends and I feel like that's what I have been doing I did get a tinder that's wonderful that really has not helped me at all because I have not I might have added a few people on snapchat and talked to them but I don't know sometimes I get on it to distract people and then I see people that I know and I'm like okay no like I need to get off of this like I still don't even know why I downloaded it are you and Brandon friends as of right now? No. And that's all I'm gonna say. Physical abuse and how to handle it. I've never been physically abused by a guy or anyone, so don't allow that. Don't allow someone to put their hands on you or hit you in any sort of way. Call the cops. That's what I'd do if someone hit me. I'd be so dramatic. He hit me, I would just drag it out. But if they are constantly, constantly hitting you, they have mental issues. Do what needs to be done in order to get them out of your life. Dealing with insecurities. I'm insecure. I have my days where I just feel fat, where I feel ugly, where I feel like my hair is gross and I shouldn't have cut it. It's a journey of loving yourself for sure. Making sure you realize your worth is important. Reminding yourself that you are beautiful to someone and reminding yourself that you're beautiful to yourself. Like look yourself in the mirror and say, I am beautiful. I am gorgeous. You have to be your own hype man because sometimes people aren't going to do it. You're not going to hear what you want to hear. Someone may call you ugly and it just ruin your whole day. A tip that I started kind of doing is when I see someone that looks really good, compliment them. Compliment other people because you never know what they're going through. You never know how they're feeling. That person could be you that I compliment. You never know. Like you just want to spread positivity to get it back in the universe. Red flags in a relationship that they aren't happy. They just stop doing things for you. They get a little more selfish. You don't really notice them until after the relationship is over. So I didn't really notice that he wasn't happy until after he broke up with me because I was just so in love. I just wasn't looking at it. I didn't think in my head that he'd ever leave. Looking at it now, there was things that he wouldn't do, things he didn't want to do, like him not being as lovey. There's certain things that he stopped doing. That's my signs that I saw, but all guys are different. All guys handle certain situations differently, so it just really depends on the person that you're dating. Top five healing tips. Doing things that you love. Hanging out with family and friends. Hanging around people who will push you to be better and are positive. Exercising, being healthy, self-care. Traveling, I feel like you get out of your little box. You get out of the area, the space of where you and your significant other were. You want to just begin the healing process. You want to re realize that there are so many people in the world that you will meet one day so many people that haven't even been blessed to see you yet next question moving in together is it a good idea well i thought moving to the same town was a good idea but i was very wrong when i did move to valdosta we didn't move in together we both had our own apartment which is probably the best decision i've made now that we're not together i do have my own space and i didn't have to move away instantly like i feel like you need to be with someone for a good year or two before you move in with them and i was just so in love that i was just like you know what I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyways. I wanna see you every day, and seeing him every day is what tore us apart, so. Talking to people fresh out of a relationship, is it a good idea? It depends on how hurt and affected you are by the relationship. So me right now, I'm still hurting and still sad. And so I am talking to people here and there, but it's nothing serious whatsoever. I kind of just want really good friends right now in my life. I don't really need any sort of commitment or anything like that. So it just depends on how well you are healing because you don't want to rebound. You don't want to start talking to other people to make yourself feel better. Like once you're healed and once you're okay with yourself and you've moved on from that person, then it's okay okay to really start talking to people but everyone's different if you feel like you're over that person 110 percent go for it sis last one signs of cheating the person being really sketch about you looking at their phone like in a relationship you shouldn't really have access to the person's phone but if you feel like they are hiding something and you try to go through it and they automatically pull it away girl don't be oblivious don't be oblivious to 
the BS that people put you through. Girls have really good gut feelings. That gut feeling is 99% of the time correct. So if you feel like that's happening and you confront them and they still lie, just find it. Girls are so good at finding things and figuring things out. So that's what I would do. Probably isn't the best advice. Being in a relationship where you're being cheated on, you just want to know the information. And once you know something, you want to know more. So when I was with that other guy who cheated on me, he just continuously, continuously lied and lied. And guys become impulsive when they're lying and they're cheating. Believe that gut feeling. Okay, that is going to be it for my part one q and I answered all these questions. I have a few more on the back that I'm still working on. That was just a lot of questions and I hope I help. I feel like I'm kind of out of breath this video and my mind is just all over the place. But I hope I could give you guys some words of encouragement. I really want to start doing more motivational videos because I feel like I've helped you guys a lot. And it kind of helps me just being able to talk about things. Talking to people about your issues I feel like kind of gives you a sense of... What's the word I'm looking for? It gives you that validation of okay this is happening the first step to dealing with an issue is accepting that you're wrong accepting what happened accepting the whole situation itself and being able to tell yourself okay i need to move on thank you guys so much for always supporting me and always being here no matter what boy i'm with no matter what boy does me dirty you guys always love me you always deal with my emotional breakdown so i really do appreciate it you guys mean the absolute world to me i will be going to la august 7th through 14th for beauty con so see me there i did get invited this year so i'm so so excited because I will be there as an official influencer which is Liddy in the city so thank you guys for watching be sure to give this video a big thumbs up subscribe turn on my post notifications head over to the vlog channel I love you and stay fabulous Most girls are